Okay, I think we'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. Um, Ed is going to be uh, chairing the meeting, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ed. All right. Um, before going on to public comment, let me just call the roll, see who's here, uh, for the membership of the Planning and Priorities Committee. So Bob Miller. Here. Myself. Matthew Jordan. Here. Katie Rodriguez. Here. Solomon Davila. Rod Foster. Here. Is Russell Di Fiore here as the alternate? No. Lauren Aronson. Here. Gary Potts. Here. Jennifer Cooper. Here. Cheryl Storms. <coughs> and subbing for Cheryl Storms. Okay. All right. Uh, Cynthia George. He's here. here. He's here. Okay. Ashley Jackson. Simon Fraser. Here. Chris Fennessy. Here. Bob Bell. Rick Van Pelt. Dwayne Cable. Crystal Colross. Here. Ted Young. Here. And Amy, uh, Amy Ulmer. Here. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes, John. I'm sorry, did I miss you? John Wood? I saw on the committee. Okay, yes, <laughs> sorry. Here. Okay, thank you, <laughs> sorry. Okay, um, so we're not going to have uh, public comment. We are going to try to limit this to about 10 minutes today uh, because we did have uh, extensive public comment at last week's open forum. Uh, I do have one request from Dan Haley. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was here at the last open forum, and I, we heard a lot of uh, uh, pros and cons for a lot of the issues on the second plan. If you recall, plan, uh, the first option is no change, just keep it a status quo. Second is to incorporate a lot of these changes. What I might, would, might recommend to you is voting status quo, vote for no change, but consider the, uh, the proposals individually. Uh, later on. Uh, that way we would have enough time for people to weigh in for or against and we'd have a better idea of taking them individually instead of, uh, instead of voting for all of them all at the same time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other further public comment? Okay, so we're going on. Yeah. Uh, I'd Simon? I'd like to briefly respond um, just that um, I wasn't aware that uh, we had to choose, and maybe the committee chairs can help me with this, do we have to choose one or the other today? It, it's my uh, impression that we'll have our discussion, and to the extent that the group feels it's appropriate uh, or to offer amendments to this, we can certainly talk about those amendments. That would be one way of doing it, but we, we start the conversation with either A or B on the table, and then we see where the conversation takes us. But we don't have to essentially either flip a coin or choose A or B and then be done with it. And we can make alterations to the plans as we see them today. I think the yes. answer to that is yes. Yeah. So we are now going on to uh, item three of the, uh, of the agenda, which is alignment discussion and possible action. So this is now for the committee members to discuss. Any comments, questions? Yeah. Matthew? Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that after the last meeting, a lot of people had raised uh, curricular issues about uh, the possible impact no, no, sorry, okay. on uh, courses, degrees, and certificates by uh, moving disciplines or departments into a new division. And so I followed up with our campus articulation officer on at OGAS to find out um, if this was true or what in fact was the truth. And she told me that there would be no impact whatsoever on articulation, transferability, or any degrees or certificates. Okay. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Well, since that was, my, since that was my request um, to get that information, is there a, a specific basis for saying no it won't affect it or just the, is there something that says specifically that the name of the division that a course comes from 
does not impact the articulation agreement or the transferability of it? I don't, if you're looking for like a, an area in Title V where it says that, I, I can't quote it. I think that Anna was basing that on um, her knowledge of the criteria for how articulation is established. And it's all established based on the individual course and not the division that the course has come from. Exactly. Is there further discussion? Yes. Cynthia. Um, I would like to ask, Cindy George, I'd like to ask um, on the uh, second version we have realignment of programs, uh, individual programs, there's five of them. Should the status quo stay as we are pass, would it be possible for those programs if uh, it was deemed that it would be better for them to move to the individual areas, could that then be explored in those individual programs possibly move, like CIS to math if they decide that that's um, in their best interest without the passage of this interim plan? I'm going to defer that question to, to the administrative co-chair. If I understood the question correctly, um, well, let me, let, let me try to approach it this way. Let's say, for example, this group agreed that we were going to um, recommend, because again, all we're going to do is be recommending. We're not, we're not making any final decisions here, that computer science go to mathematics and that uh, computer science and mathematics got together and the mathematics folks in particular said, you know, I don't think it's a good idea and this is why we don't think it's a good idea. Um, that might be a separate process than what we are engaging in right now. From our perspective, for whatever reasons, we've agreed that, that, <coughs> that it might make some sense and everything we've searched. So, but at the next level, when this goes to the next level, if, if someone wanted to argue against that, I would assume at that point they might try to do that. Simon, question? Well, actually, I'm just, I, I'm going to, I would argue against um, choosing the status quo and then leaving it up to college council, um, mainly because I believe that planning and priorities has um, invested so much time and knowledge into this process that we've come to this point with this specific, with these specific plans through all of that process with the task teams. And I think that if we simply said we're not going, we're going to recommend nothing, especially when we've had divisions that have come to us and said, please move us, um, I think that would risk cutting out anything that planning and priorities and its task teams have done and removing us from the process, um, especially as we move forward. So, I mean, let me be clear. I don't like either plan as it is. I just think that we should recommend some change, especially where departments have said they want to change. Um, what, I, what I was basically specifically referring to are the realigned programs. Some of the programs in option two say that all of these programs, if we um, uh, passed it as is, would be moving, whereas some of these programs, there's been s people who have spoken out against it. So I wanted to make sure if we passed one or the other that these individual programs may later be um, revisited to say, yes, fashion should go to VAMS or no, fashion shouldn't go to VAMS. Um, I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't set in concrete if we voted for one, that individual program changes may not be approved in the, in the future. That was basically so my question. So is your question basically how flexible are we with this plan going forward? Yeah, when it, yes. I mean, when it impacts individual programs, I'm, I'm wondering if those will be what I got from Bob, that yes, they may be considered. Yeah, um, it, it would be for someone other than us to yeah. determine that. I think okay. Joe Footner's gone. Joe, can, can you come up to the can mic, you can please? mic, please? Joe, sorry. I think because there, there likely is some confusion and not mine alone. Is the uh, proposal for the revised interim plan draft number three, which is dated yeah, April 7th, the proposal that we're acting on the A versus B vote today. Is it based on this draft number three? Yes. Which was dated on April 7th. So there have been no modifications that were made since the last meeting. Is that correct? 
no modifications to this document. Okay. And I believe you, there were copies available at the table. All right. Is that Fine. I, just, that? I just wanted to get clarification. Yeah, and that's that. correct. And that was Thanks. that's part of the process that we indicated that we were going to have the public discussion, allow input, and then this group would come back and begin to discuss it after that. Okay. Katie? Yeah, just in terms of where this is going, seeing as how whatever recommendations we make are then forwarded to the Academic Senate where we have representation from the faculty of all divisions, I think is something that we should consider in terms of if we send part of this forward, that then there would be more vetting of it at that time. Simon? Actually, I'm a little confused on this one um, because the process um, has always been up until, I think, two weeks ago when suddenly this became academic and professional matter. Um, was going to go to the College Council for, for the final decision, since especially this affects managers clearly and working conditions, and so that's contractual. So what is the process going to be from here? Well, the, the, the process, and I took a picture of it on a whiteboard that when we had a little discussion a week or so ago, uh, the Planning and Priorities Committee uh, will make a recommendation two places, one being the College Council and one being the Academic Senate. The Academic Senate takes it up as an academic and professional matter, uh, and they then would make their recommendation through CAPM, the Council for Academic Professional Matters, which then would go to the Executive Committee slash Superintendent President and finally the Superintendent President, and should he choose, to the Board of Trustees. And the Board of Trustees uh, would, then, would then consider it. Um, so, the Planning and Priorities Standing Committee is a subcommittee of College Council, so it has an obligation to report back to College Council, and the College Council can then choose to take an action on it should they choose to. This is just new news to me that this, I, I was surprised this became an academic professional matter well, rather than being an organizational matter. Because it is an academic and professional matter because it impacts a lot of the academics and professionals that we have in our, <laughs> our, our audience today, for example. And that's just, that's the college right. process and has been for decades. It, it, it's kind of contrary to what we started the process with, but okay. Uh, Amy? Yeah, I just want to follow up on what Cindy's talking about. Um, in some <coughs> hallway conversations I've had with people about the, the individual realigned programs, I, there's a little concern that while some of these faculty may wish to move to another division, some of them might have felt that they were mandated to move. Their division was coming apart, and so they had to decide where they want to go. And obviously, if we vote for status quo, they don't have to move. Um, and I, I think what I'm trying to say here, not very articulately, is that it, it would be good if the faculty can continue, the ones who would be moving to other areas, to have that <coughs> conversation to make sure it's not because they felt they had to go but because that's where they really feel academically and curricular, curricularly they are aligned. Yes, um, Jennifer. Well, I, um, I, I was kind of under the um, assumption that we were going to put a vote towards A or towards B, but that we could make modifications. Now, I am hoping that we could kind of modify B into A, where we would be status quo. A lot of work has gone into this. Some really good ideas came out of it. And I'm hoping the modification could be that we carry this in A, so that once we get status quo established, we keep working on this and, and build from this to where we want to be. That way, everybody's involved still. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. OK. Thank you. Lauren. I ask that after we take a vote, that we then follow that up with um, modifications, and that that be put into the vote. Well, so I, if we vote A, for instance, if we vote for A, we're accepting A, and then we discuss and have on the table in our minutes modification. Well, I think what we would do is we would take a motion, and then if there is a desire to amend that motion, it can be amended at that point. Simon? Uh, I'm going to suggest that we don't take any motions until we've actually talked about the plan a little bit more in depth, um, because I have a couple of suggestions I'd like to make on plan B. 
Um, the current things that we know we like are computer science and, ki and uh, kinesiology moving. They've said that they're either fine or want to move. Um, architecture, fashion, and graphic communications said they do not want to move. And so my suggestion would be to put them back into ENT, into this little block. Um, my understanding is that under business and workforce development, there are two sort of subdivisions that continue separately. Um, I actually like that idea, and I would recommend um, changing the name to business and uh, business and technology education, or something along those lines, versus workforce development, because it does sound a little weird. And I, I would recommend that we take that up as an amendment to to a motion. Yeah, but I. But at least the point is out there. Yeah. Yeah. But I I, I think personally that having this kind of discussion and taking notes as we go around and then maybe when we get to the point of w someone wanting to make a motion we could maybe include some of these some of these uh, thoughts if that was the pleasure of the group is, is there further comment under is fashion I, i'm confused wasn't fashion under business that's correct but they choose to be with can someone come to the mic if you're going to speak please coming from fashion okay that's fine thank you yeah, um, fashion's in business right now, and that was put on the table, and they have made, um, they, they are open, open for discussion. Um, but I think it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to rise to this level. I think that could be a discussion that we could have within our division and other, other divisions they're going to impact would, because we both have the insight of how that would fit or not. To rise to this level would be, uh, you know, I don't know if that's the best use of your time to find out at that particular level. And the, the, other point, the other point that I'm hearing is well, I think we were all moving on. It's going to either, either be one or the other, either the status quo or these, this realignment. And now I'm hearing you guys are saying, well, there may be another variation that we could put into play. And I don't know if that was something we were, we didn't know that was going to be a possibility. It was, we thought we were either one or the other. I know you guys have put a lot of time in. Uh, your concern is we've, we've, we've busted our butts to do this. But uh, I don't know if you feel that you must make a change now because you put all this time in. Maybe with some insight and this information you've gathered, um, this status quo would work. And I think the issues of maybe C, um, um, computer studies or computer science going to math, that could be a, 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 divi a division discussion going on. That would be my position. Okay. Thank you, Darren. Okay. Uh, let's continue the discussion among the committee. Uh, anyone? Simon? Um, there was a question specifically on, on fashion because at the last co uh, public comment forum, they said that they wanted to go wherever architecture and graphic communications went. And that was what I think we wanted to follow up on. And I think what we want to do is, as if, if committee members have questions that people in the audience can answer, we, we would request respectfully that you just answer the questions and not, 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 not take it further so that we can just get the information that we need. So fashion, the question is out there, if you went to um, VAMS, do, do, does anybody want to voice an opinion on that from, from, uh, from your perspective at this point? And you don't have to if you don't want to, so it's up to you. Please come to the mic if you do, please. Um, we are perfectly happy in business, but perfectly open to moving to VAMS. We could see how we fit in, probably fit well in both places. We know we're fine in business, but yeah, we fit, we could see a fit over there too, but we really haven't discussed it. Okay. Like Thank formally. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Are there other questions from the committee members? Is there further discussion? Is there a motion? Katie. Uh, Katie. Point of order, after we have a motion, we can feel free to continue the discussion, make sure. amendments, or divide the question. Absolutely. I'll, I'll make a motion that the committee approve Plan B. Or no I'll second. Plan. Okay, so there's a motion to approve Plan B, and it has been seconded. Is there discussion? Katie? I'd like to move to divide the question of Plan B into the various parts. You, wa you want to amend the motion? Is that what you Divide mean? the question. question. Divide the question. Could you specify? What do you mean? <laughs> yes, One column at a time or something? I <laughs> um, 
Yes, by, let's see, the business and workforce development as one question, the CEC as a second question, um, and then all of the programs within the realigned column as individual questions. Um, I'd like to second that with a separate, with an amendment to that and that we continue each with permanent deans and interim deans in the library also, just sure. to make it fair. Friendly amendment. <laughs> okay. So make what that means. Yes. We're doing the right thing. Uh, let me, we're doing. Okay. So I think what I, what, 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 what we've heard is that um, if, we, if we look at the columns from left to right, that the amendment includes the continue with permanent deans, the continue with interim deans, and the library as it's currently stated on the chart. Hang on a second, Simon. And then we would have separate discussion on the uh, business and workforce development column, the CEC column, and the realigned programs column. Is that what we heard? What we've essentially done is um, separate the one motion into um, six. Um, and then actually the realigned one will be in separate motions separately, but we can take them automatically by division of the question. Okay, so that was a thought that we had as well, which is we can vote on each column, if that's what you're, I think you're suggesting, uh, as one way of approaching this. And then the, the, the remaining columns we can have further discussion about. Is we now need to take a vote on dividing the question. <laughs> okay. But I believe we actually had divided out the realigned programs, each one. Each one. More than six. So that wouldn't just be one column. It would How be many is it all five. It's count? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, ten. Ten. Ten, ten. ten questions. Ten questions. Good <laughs> <laughs> for us. <laughs> it's it's fair. I think it's right. <laughs> all right. So question number one would be. Oh, we have a question. Right. Continue permanent deans. All right. So do we have a motion on that? We have a motion on that. We do. So, Point of order. Yes. We have to vote on whether or not we're in favor of dividing the question. All right. Yes. Um, so through a show of hands, we're going to ask the committee members to, to vote. Uh, all in favor of the proposal to divide the question, please raise your hand. No, chair, chairs do not vote. Right. But I'm just, okay. Sorry. So I'm sorry. Keep your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. All opposed? Two. Okay, thank you. So we are now going to divide them into how many? Ten, it sounded. Ten motions. Ten. Okay. Which now automatically stands. Sorry. The bit. And now one more issue. I'd like to address the library for one more question because I, I was not clear after the last meeting. There was, we're voting that the library ultimately makes their own decision with Dr. Bell. That's what I understood from my, could I uh, I think in essence that's, that's, that would be correct. That is correct. Is there anyone from the uh, library that Krista, can... do you want to address that issue? I missed the last meeting, I apologize, but our, this succession plan that's mentioned here, I just wanted to point out that uh, it has three alternatives, and the first one is to fit into this first column, to continue with the existing um, permanent dean, I'm mean, not the existing permanent dean, but continue with the permanent dean position. And then the sec second option is to continue with an, or to have an interim dean. So I just, that information just isn't on here, so maybe that answers Lauren's question. Yeah, but, but in essence, it would be a discussion between, uh, in, in the administration and the library. The library. That's right. correct. We, we, the succession plan was created before this committee existed. We didn't know what the process would be, so that's why it didn't come through this committee. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, so I, I think we need to spend just a, a bit of, of time clarifying the questions to, so that we are going to be clear about, about that. <laughs> so the first one would be uh, continuing um, with the permanent deans of those divisions in the first column. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, the second is <coughs> the question of continuing with interim deans in the second column, yes. mm -hmm. specifically math and visual art of uh, AMS. Okay. Uh, the third question uh, would you be... Might go, you might go to the library, just to take the easy ones okay. first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. A question on the status of the library and uh, their succession plan. Uh, number four is what? Business and workforce development. 
Okay, so we're going to take a vote on the creation of the business and at least as it's presently titled Business and Workforce Development Division. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Question five is uh, the, the plan for CEC. I, I would go to the realign programs next, I think. Okay. On the realign programs, that's number five. Number six is CEC. On a point of order, I'm sorry. Um, realign programs, um, we divided them into one each. So oh, okay. Sorry. Architecture okay. Divans, I then fashion divans. There's where the 10 was. I okay, couldn't so figure out where the 10, the 10 were coming right. from. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you're asking for a vote on each separate item under the realigned programs, is correct. that correct? Correct. I see. Okay. All right. All right. That was the missing piece in my mind. Thank and you. And then finally then, a vote on CEC. Okay. All right. Very good. Any questions about the process for the committee members? Okay. So... Um, so at this point, um, I think I would entertain question. Simon. Um, I would like to move the previous question on the motion to continue with permanent deans. Okay. So another. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Uh, is there discussion on the item number one? Uh, I just. Amy. Amy. I would just point out that no one has objected to that in any of our emails. Okay. <coughs> Be on the record. <laughs> okay. No one has objected to that in any of the correspondence that we have received. Okay. And that is a, a continuing uh, with permanent deans for the divisions lift, listed in the first column. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Do we have a motion? Yes. Okay. It's been seconded. Uh, I'll ask again the committee members to vote with a show of hands. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. Fifteen. All opposed? Okay, so it's unanimous. And abstentions. Uh, abstentions, too. But. All right, number two, um, we have a uh, question, or rather, is a motion on item two? The motion already exists. We now are in discussion of it automatically. Okay, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> All right, so there's a motion. Um, to continue with the interim deans in the math and VAMS divisions. And that was seconded as well? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. What, what, I, I thought we were voting on these all individually. So let me just explain what happens. A motion was made to adopt Plan B. Mm -hmm. um, by a division of the question, what someone can do by taking a single motion is to take the content of that motion and to split it up into areas that could in potentially stand as individual motions. Should a motion to divide the question pass, it is automatically assumed that all of the questions are all now motions. So we do okay. not need first or seconds. We can just, just, continue. just, we can continue. just go. We can just the only time we discussion need, and vote through them. We can decide to call up a separate one. So, for example, if we wanted to jump to CEC, we could call up the motion for CEC. Um, if we wanted to just go jump straight to a vote without discussion, that's when you would move the question. Um, otherwise, as soon as one motion is dispensed with, we just automatically enter the next one. Okay. All right. Okay. No. Let me let me ask now. Okay. What he said Cindy? is, we voted to adopt Plan B. We voted to change to individually vote on elements of Plan B, we but not voted necessarily. To adopt Plan B. But not necessarily to have Plan B definitely be the one that we're voting for. I, I do believe that when we're done with this process whatever plan B is as a result of the discussion on the individual questions will be what plan B is. Yes. yes. And then we'll vote between A and B. No. We would not need to. No, um, by, by the process of this, if we decided that we wanted to continue with in permanent deans, continue with interim deans, not move any of the realigned programs, let the library do its own thing, and not to create a business and workforce development division, so essentially it becomes plan A by osmosis, so morphing, um, but then that is the plan that we forward. We don't actually forward this thing or the other plan. We forward whatever bits of the plans we like and whatever bits we don't like. So this is the way that we can sort of amend it without going through an amendment process and just deciding which individual parts we like and which ones we don't. Cindy, does that clarify? The problem with that approach is that we never get to consider option A. Option, well, my suggestion would be that if we consider option A, so far the options that we've <coughs> continued, I believe, are option A. 
to continue with the permanent and to continue with the interims. So, so far we've gotten to option no, A. Option A is make no changes, hire interim deans for um, business and engineering technology, um, hire an interim dean for CEC, and hire an interim dean for the library. And then when we get to those specific areas, we can amend the motion to say to revert to plan option A and hire interim deans instead well, what, of the realignment. What's the objection option? to considering option A and option B? Point of order, that would be a separate question, correct? Sir? Yes, it would. Um, we can, what we I think can we've got, a, we've got this motion on the table we've got to deal with, right? Yeah, at this point, to, we do. There are ways to simply say that this is, this is the way that we can decide for specific areas where we said we liked part of the plan B, but we didn't want it with the rest of it, we still have the option to discuss. And I will point out we haven't actually discussed anything yet. Right. We, we haven't gotten to business and workforce development. And if someone says here and we strongly object to having this business workforce development division plan and we want to hire an interim dean instead, that's something that we can choose mm -hmm. during discussion of that particular motion. So, so you're saying, in essence, that if, if we get to column three and you know, we choose not to adopt this, we are creating a de facto plan A. Essentially, yes, because we would have voted no on this we're plan, just going component ENT by and component. business would simply be status quo. Right, it, it is indeed component by component. And Chris, you had it, It's almost basically we're taking away the idea of having two concrete plans where it's all of one or all of the other, and we're creating a new plan by picking this apart as we no, go. No, we're, we're taking away the status quo option is what we're doing. No, because the status quo is entirely possible if everything that we vote on, all, all 10 of these questions, is exact, is with no change. Then that's, even though we would vote 10 times, as long as we vote for no change, then it's the status quo, then there's no change. So instead of, it's just understand. instead of saying, for example, if one of the 10, this committee felt the need to change, then this committee has that ability to change that without having to say one all-encompassing motion that well, would not allow for that change. Let me, let me just say that um, I've read dozens of emails. I came to the, um, to the hearing last week, and everything that I heard with the exception of computer science, and apparently that meeting between computer science and math hasn't taken place yet because that's, there's one half of that that is pro-change and the other half hasn't been heard from yet. And um, every, otherwise, every comment I have heard has been to go forward with plan A. And now we've taken it off the table out of discussion. So I feel I like I can't respond to the constituencies that have been um, coming to these meetings and have been so vocal because we've decided to take a parliamentary course that is based on only considering plan B and rearranging it however we choose but never bringing a vote on plan A. And I don't think that's fair to the people that have come forward. Okay. Katie and then John. I think that we're absolutely free to vote down every piece of this if we so choose to do so. And that was part of the idea behind the motion of dividing the question. So if all we are left with is forwarding the recommendation to the Academic Senate of CS and math, the Academic Senate could then take that up at that point and everything else is gone. John. Yeah. It looks like we're taking a rather uh, circuitous route here uh, to decide whether we even have a plan B. Uh, if we go through this whole thing and there are zero changes to it, then we're going to have a big vote between plan A and plan A. Yep. And whoever wins, <laughs> wins. Uh, so if there's even one change to this, then we have a vote between A and B. Is that now, correct? Now, what I feel is important to say that when you talk about plan A, plan B, that was just a means by which to get it organized. And that there was never any intent to say that A or B, and that's all you can do with it. All it was, all that interim plan proposal draft number three indicates is a way to put it, put something on paper for this committee to consider after we had the public input. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if we get through this whole process, 
with, with, with this so-called plan B and whatever, however it ends up being changed or modified or whatever, and someone wants to put a motion on the table, I still want to go back to plan A, do it. And the committee can then make its votes on that. In other words, I don't, personally, I would not want this to get to such a point that it comes down to parliamentary this or parliamentary that because the next thing you know, we have a much bigger issue on our hands. We've, we've had a very open process and started back in October. We've been through this, through task teams and what have you. And I, I would not want it to come down to some parliamentary something or other in order to, you know, for the issue. That's just my personal opinion. Simon. I'd like to call up the question on business and workforce development so we can discuss what we want to do with business and workforce development. All right, so can we have discussion on that, on that issue? So let's, let's please have discussion on that issue. Does anybody um, want to share something on that particular issue? Looks like Solomon. Chris and, and Solomon. Chris and Solomon. Okay. Um, I, I personally, I mean, obviously the feedback that we've gotten is, is entirely against this idea of combining the two of them. Um, and I think that while maybe with a lot more work and a lot more discussion, there could be an eventual plan that would really work. Right now, we don't have that. And I think that especially since it's an interim plan until a, an eventual alignment happens, I for the students who are going to be taking classes in these areas, I don't want them for this year to be having classes in a, in a, a, a business section and the next year be in the business and workforce development section and the year after that be in an entirely new section. I think that it, it's, this is far too great a change and it's not well prepared enough for it to be really lasting for me to support the idea of what's being uh, proposed. Solomon? Sure. Um, with regards to the business and workforce development division, and this is where I'm going to bank on Cindy to back, back me up on some of this stuff that I, I vaguely know. Um, my understanding is that uh, through the Chancellor's Office and through VITIA funding and much of what happens through CT, it, it's actually divided quite a bit here at PCC where a lot of the funding and a lot of the appropriation for the funding to put students in, into workforce development type of certificates and supporting of those outcomes. Um, it, it makes just prudent sense to have someone be able to appropriate those objectives, objectives of that particular office directly to the programs. There is a lot of overlap what happens towards developing these programs over at Lodal, over at the Chancellor's Office, which are actually the same across every single discipline. Uh, somebody that knows a little bit about business doesn't need to know, know everything about what goes on, but actually support a program in business as support a program in engineering technology or support a program in any other workforce development program, no matter where they may reside. So there is an individual that typically would, that, am, am I correct, that would reside over the funds that come through or the supports of workforce development type of programs uh, that should, in, in essence, works out of the CTE office as is. Is that correct? Um, right now, the vice presidents and um, people who work in the CTE offices, along with the deans, are, have done their input on the different programs in past years. Um, by looking at business and workforce development, we're assuming, this kind of assumes that all of the CTE programs, which used to be called voc ed for those who aren't uh, familiar with them, are under business and engineering. Um, actually, we have Count, we have a large amount of CTE programs, certificate programs, under um, the VAMs. We have one under social sciences. We have um, several under natural sciences, and we have a large amount under health sciences. So by putting, you could have a director or a head of CTE without that person being over these two divisions directly. I, I think it's important to remind the committee that the concept behind a business and technical education or technology education or, or workforce development division was to have uh, a dean who would have responsibility over the CTE office, the business division, and elements of engineering and technology that were business or technology related in order to get to the synergies that you're, I think, referencing, Solomon. The further idea was to provide a second management position, a director of CTE and blank, that would work with that dean in order to provide two managers in order to bring these to work with those. 
uh, those areas that, that were um, within the, business, the current business division and the current ENT division, except for those elements that are being talked about separately in the realign programs column. So that was, that was the idea, to consolidate responsibilities, what have you. Currently, our CTE program is very disparate, is very decentralized, and is not potentially coordinated in the manner that is as effective or efficient as it could be. So part of column three was to try and address some of those issues uh, given our current management structure. And so, okay, thank you for bringing that up. I wanted to have that discussion. And the second thing that I would just bring to light is that much of the uh, opinions that were brought up to this, uh, to this committee, um, I felt like there was a very little distinction uh, on three real fundamental objectives that we are here as hired as, as faculty. Uh, one is a budgetary reality. I understand that potentially four individuals are being consolidated to two, and I, I understand that. But it's a reporting structure, primarily from what I can see, and it is bringing common institutional uh, uh, synergistic activities that would undertake that particular office. And the separate thing would be an HR discipline qualification, something that deals with credentials of an individual, what they can teach and what they cannot teach. I don't expect to be teaching an accounting class, for example, if I'm going to be in, the, in this new division. But that's a HR issue. It's not at all a program issue. It's not at all a reporting issue. It's an HR issue. And this third thing would be essentially what hasn't really been discussed in this particular committee is the second presentation that was done by Joy Britton with the idea of the different methodologies for which we're going to be exercising our programs through pathways or through faculty chairs and et cetera, which really is where the primary work the most faculty will be undertaking, not necessarily the reporting structure that I see here in this particular. Right. And, I, it, and, and it's important to note that whatever elements of this that are, that, that, that it are or are not passed today are interim. So going back to Chris's comments, uh, the, the, the second group, the group that is still going to continue their work into looking at other ways in which to um, facilitate student success and programs and what have you, they're going to continue their work, which may in and of itself result in further recommendations next year. For now, we're looking about what can we do to move forward effective next July 1st. I have a question for uh, Cindy, actually. Um, if we take away uh, the idea that ENT, or, or what is now under the ENT block is sort of separate here, um, away from the sort of the traditional business programs, is there a benefit to having them all clumped like that together? Um, I don't think I quite understand what you're asking. Um, my, my opinion is this is it makes, like, it makes it look like the majority of CTE programs are only in these two areas. Whereas there are multiple, multiple programs in the health sciences, as many as are in the ENT program um, in health sciences that are CTE programs. Uh, this makes it look like CTE is primarily in these two areas, and I don't think it is. Do you think then as a follow-up that CTE should be more consolidated than it is or more spread out than it is? Or? I don't think CTE should be under a division. Is, I mean, having a, having a manager, yes, we, we do need some kind of cohesive um, head. I do not think that putting them un, in an area with business and engineering and technology is, is necessarily the way to go. Yeah, and of course, we're not talking about moving all CTE programs. You know, we're just talking about these in particular would be perhaps synergistically appropriate in, in, in a single division for the time being. Chris? And I think that, that just harkens back to the ideas that were brought up in October of, you know, not everything has to be a vertically aligned right. alignment. Uh, there can be horizontal things, and this is, I think, the perp perfect pos uh, position for that. I mean, I think the idea of a director of CTE and blah, 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 is possible uh, on a, without having to be as part of a specific division, like you said. Yeah. And I think there's not, no reason why we can't consider that. And that's where option, the option B group is they're going to pick up and continue that, that, that discussion about working more horizontally as opposed to vertically. 
How, how would the committee feel about taking away or, or splitting business and workforce development into business and ENT back again? Um, probably with deans for both, I'm guessing. Um, and also recommending the creation of a director of CTE. Um, Rod, and then I think Ted. Just a quick couple of comments about this whole um, um, dispersion of CTE across the curriculum. Um, divisions have been encouraged for a long time to um, create certificate programs, and it's, and it's been healthy because it's gotten people um, in performing arts and in VAMs, uh, places that you wouldn't normally think of as workforce development divisions. It's gotten them to be creative and to come up with ideas that do have this vocational hook on them. And I think that would be lost in, uh, in moving towards a centralized CTE management structure. We obviously need to have somebody fill the position it for in CTE that's been vacant for a long time. And um, and I'd be very much in favor of that. Ted? I, I just I had a question about the, the academic dean positions listed here. On, on the other columns, we have permanent dean, interim dean, um, and here we don't specify that. And Bob made a comment two meetings ago about the need to have some kind of a permanent hire. And it, it makes sense that if you're going through a process of hiring a dean, um, you're not going to hire somebody, you know, go through all that for, for a, a one-year period of time or something. But I don't, I don't see it specified here. I don't, I don't see it clear. The, the, a couple of meetings ago and in three, four meetings in previous discussions, the idea is that we would hire a dean who would have responsibility for CTE, the CTE office. At the same time, if we went ahead with this or some variation of the business and workforce development concept, she or he would have responsibilities for those areas as well. So we'd have, we'd, we'd have a permanent dean that we hired that at minimum would take on the CTE office, plus, at least in the interim, this or some type of structure like this. Now, as the second part of what we do as a group, the, the one that Joy is heading and others are heading, uh, the Plan B group, if in that process changes were recommended and, and everybody agreed to those changes, then that person's responsibilities would, be, would morph into something else. Whether it be less responsibility, more responsibility, different responsibility, we don't know. But initially, that this would be a permanent position that would take over at minimum the CTE office and anything else that it was determined uh, that that person would be responsible for. That's why it says academic dean, because it would be an academic dean with the assumption whether they're just the CTE dean or have more responsibilities in terms of uh, uh, working with faculty, they'd have res they, they, they are an academic dean as opposed to a support dean. I was wondering what is the advantage of having any interim deans at all? What is the advantage? Is it a budgetary question mark? Is that the reason we continue to have interim deans? Um, I think it's because they're interims now. I don't think there's, I mean, I think if, the, if this body decided that it wanted to recommend that those interim dean positions be flown as permanent dean positions at this point for math and VAMs, we, I, I, I assume the group could make that recommendation if that's well, what that, they wanted to do. That's my uh, recommendation, but I still wonder what is the advantage of not doing that? What is the advantage of an interim dean? Seems like it's a problem. I, I think the whole idea was we were supposed to come up with a plan for next year, period. Right. While the college comes together with some kind of consensus, how, I don't know, on a realignment. <laughs> and uh, Bob just a, a alluded to Joy Britton's plan. It's not her plan, but she presented the group, it. right, yeah. Where faculty would choose their own cohorts and then their own dean, which would throw all of this pretty much out the window to a certain yeah. extent, except that there have to be deans somewhere. So I think the idea was to keep the college functioning, the areas functioning under academic deans, whether they're permanent or interim until there's some type of major realignment, although I don't, I don't know if that will actually happen. So then the permanent deans become interim deans too. We're always interim. We're on a yeah, one-year contract. 
As are you, John. I might want to know more. <laughs> the more I talk. Yeah. I'm only kidding. A little levity there. Well, I'd like to just throw one more piece in this. I'm sorry, Cindy. I, okay. Uh, cool. You know, if we're throwing everything on the table, then I would like to ask that the library be moved to the continue with interim deans as well. I, I don't see why we are not treating the library the way that we're treating all of the rest of these areas, and I'd request that that be moved as well. Okay. May I suggest that we sort of table that and continue we'll, the we'll discussion on, on, the, on this column? Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, a lot of the emails that have been sent uh, that were in support of uh, A were because they felt business and engineering and technology felt that they were losing um, the viewpoint of their own individual deans. And I think that's something that's important to be considered. I'm, I think that maybe for the business and workforce development, maybe we ought to leave them separate right now and put interim deans in there for a year so that they can then decide over the next year what is the best way to go about doing this. Um, I know that they're upset over the fact that they don't feel that they have somebody representing their individual interests who has expertise necessarily in their area to the extent that the areas that have, the divisions that have interim deans and permanent deans do. And, and I think that's where a lot of the um, criticism has come, that business says they should be represented by somebody, a dean, whether it's interim or permanent, that understands their business programs and the same with engineering and technology. Well, then I, I'd like to pose a question. For those of you who participated in the task teams, uh, the idea of um, creating this new business and workforce development division was based on what reasoning then? Was it not based on the reasoning of de-siloing? We've had that discussion going on in this campus for quite some time now. This office is not determined by HR. It's determined by the chancellor's office. So. If you're in the accounting division, but your degree is in English, you don't get to teach accounting. So there's never an issue here about who gets to teach what, just because you're in this one particular area. Correct. But back to you, uh, Ed. Yes, I think that was the idea. Um, and then, obviously, the CTE director, formerly known as Ellen Liggins, that position has been empty. Somebody needs to take over that. And the idea was to fold it in knowing that there are CE, uh, certificate programs in other areas. And that had a lot of discussion, I imagine, among the group, right? Yeah, it did. But we've heard a lot of negativity from the faculty involved. And I think we always looked at it that there was option A, but now option A seems to be off the table. No, so it, which, no it's not off the table. It's not off the table. Okay. It's not off the table at all. If I was just say, if we voted no on this, then we've taken no position on business and workforce on the on these two areas, and then we could just vote for the option A section. Um, if that's just if so, if we voted this particular plan part of the plan down, it doesn't move forward, and then option A becomes what we then consider. Okay, Chris. Just as a point of information, so we currently have an empty director of CTE position. Actually, we have an empty dean, uh, associate dean of career and technical education. So, okay. It's not a director level, it's a dean level position. And would that be higher or lower than director level? Lower. Uh, higher, excuse me. Higher, higher than higher. director level. Higher. Okay. And then currently in business and ENT, we have both those positions are also vacant? Or? Those are vacant. Uh, Dr. Bell is acting as the uh, dean for both of those areas right now. I see. And I am facilitating and helping the CTE office through their activities right now. Okay, in that case, I don't even know if we have to vote it down. I, I'm, I'm going to move to amend the question to, uh, to fill the vacancies. Uh, and by the way, just to further clarification, because I think I need to do this, um, Daryl Taylor this semester was a, a coordinator for business and has been acting to the extent that he can, uh, assisting Dr. Bell with the, with the operation of the business division. Uh, he's done a good job of that, and Coleman Griffith, I don't know if Coleman's in the room, has been doing the same for ENT. So the faculty have been paid stipends in order to provide some level of assistance to Dr. Bell in order to, for them to do what they need to do. Is that correct, Daryl? Well, I'm getting released. I've got a winner's stipend, but I, I'm, I'm 
just get release time. So. Right. What percentage release time are you getting right now? Uh, 100%. 100, so it's 100% release time. So the, the position has been provided to, to do that. Stipend was for winter. Thank you for that clarification. So if I could continue my, uh, I'm going to move to amend the question to uh, basically strike this column and instead say that we will fill the, posi the vacant positions of the vice dean or assistant dean of CTE, the dean of business, and the dean of ENT. I, that was a, that was a second. Was that a motion? That's a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, before, before, before someone says second, is that basically the plan A option? Yes. Equivalent. I'll second it. Okay. So. I don't think plan A includes the associate dean of CTE. I think that position has been off the table. Okay, okay but, but this motion, if I understood it correctly, and clarify me if I did not. Your motion is to um, continue with business and ENT as their own separate divisions, yes. filling those two division uh, dean positions, and also filling the CTE dean position. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Was that seconded? Yes. Is there discussion? Uh, I'm wondering where the can we throw the library in there too? <laughs> That's a separate question. That would be separate a separate question. That would be a separate ten. issue. And are we? Well, in essence, we're going back to Plan A, but requesting deans as opposed to a faculty member being asked to be a coordinator. Matt. And Matt, uh, is that filling them with interim or permanent positions? Is that need to be specified? I mean, as far as I, from what I understand, the, the reason that it says permanent in, in interim on this is because that's what we currently have. But regardless, there's still a dean. Uh, I mean, unless, again, are there, are there what, whatever comes out of this body is a recommendation. Right. And uh, what the others no. who receive the recommendations choose to do with this information is up to them based upon budget realities and other realities that we're dealing with at the moment. So, he, you know, I think to the degree that we, um, can, should honor the work of our task teams and what they put forward, um, that's, a, that's a decision of the people sitting around this table. But beyond that, these are just recommendations, folks. So we can't, interims, permanents, whatever they're going to be, if they will be, is a determination that will be made elsewhere. I, I guess my question is, is, what are the specific differences between the actual responsibilities, pay, whatever it might be, of an interim versus a permanent? They're, well, salary-wise, it is, it is wherever a person uh, fits on the salary schedule that based upon qualifications and years of service and those types of things. So that, that, that's that. Um, the difference between being an interim and a permanent is that it, as an interim, it sometimes is difficult to make long-term decisions because of the fact that you are an interim. Uh, so that, but that's, a, that's another level of decision making and discussion as it relates to whoever's going to make the decision as whether it's interim or permanent. Right. I, I, I would suggest that if we're looking at a plan that in its entirety is an interim plan for a year or something like that, it really, even though it's not up to us, as Bob just said, to decide whether or not it's going to ultimately be per interim or permanent, but for a recommendation, to me it makes no sense to recommend a permanent position for an interim basis. It, it just, it's contradictory. So if we were going to recommend filling these two with you know, keeping the divisions as they are essentially um, with deans, that would have to be an interim because we're going to address all of this again, right? I, I can't speak for whomever the <laughs> folks are who are going to make these final decisions. Yeah. So it's. Uh, but I mean, the idea is that we still have the other, what we've been calling Joy's plan, we still have to address that, and there's a lot of discussion and work to be done on that. Yeah, because this whole thing is theoretically interim until yeah, there's exactly. finalization. Uh, so, but however they fill the positions is, is them, if in fact they choose to fill positions. John? You know, the experts who I am listening to here are mostly in the audience. They're the people who have corresponded with us and told us what they know. They're the experts here. I can't vote against them is the problem here. 
and I almost feel like we should switch roles, that the experts should be up here and they should be working with each other to organize this and we should sit out there and listen and then vote to them. It's, it's, it, we, yeah. We're doing this just like we do so much here. We open the barn door, the animals run out, everybody gets excited and goes tackles a bunch of horses. John, but this process has been in place since October. Yeah, yeah okay. and look where we are today. Well, but there's reasons for that. I think Solomon and then Crystal. Go ahead, Crystal. Oh, go, go ahead. Um, I just want to respond to that, John, that we put two task teams together, two really solid teams a lot of participation, faculty, students, administrators, staff were on these teams. They met, they held public forums, they came to us with two plans and asked us to look at them. And they believed in them. I don't think they took this lightly. I've talked to several of them personally. They put a lot of effort in this. They did inquiries, they did research, they looked at other schools. I feel that everybody had the opportunity to talk to these two task teams. They were very open. They didn't hide under a curtain. They had open public forums. They invited people to talk. I think by not seriously looking at what they've done here and voting on them, we have then once again said, too bad, we're negating your work. Okay. And I'm not willing to do that. Excuse me. Uh, uh, first of all, wait, wait, wait. Solomon uh, first. Okay, sorry. I, I also wanted to read similar to what Crystal mentioned. I was there present in the teams and going back to what Amy mentioned the fact that this structure was actually meant to address a couple of you know, problems with even with some of the workforce development. In other words, we wanted somebody at the table to actually push the workforce development to, at the forefront of every discussion because that is an EMP goal. And we felt that as to the, the, the fact that it, we do, do have this dual sort of dean and, and associate dean was kind of like a mixed message of who's responsible for what. This will make one literally one person responsible for that particular effort and have that be a concerted effort and the fact that it also will kind of break down a little bit of the barriers which actually the intermediate managers were considered in these discussions and in a barrier to fulfilling some of the programs need and I will point out to the committee that it was my division ENT who actually voted out our own Dean for being a barrier for their programs and that happened uh, you know not less than a year ago so there were there was done through a very purposeful process to remove our dean because it was, according to them, prohibiting in their program development. And I will also mention one more thing that the, um, um, the process was quite open and in our division meetings, um, I would say the opposite, John, that what you are hearing is of definitely a voice, but there was uh, in our division much more people who were indifferent or did not vote for this particular plan. I mean, in other words, they didn't. They actually weren't support for this particular plan because to them they were indifferent. It was like it's not going to affect our program. It's not going to affect our teaching. Let's go forward. We need a boss, and and that was it. But it was the minority who actually uh, wanted to stay with Plan A. Okay. Uh, first of all, Rod Foster had to go up, go back and, and uh, check on his class, and he asked me to fill in his his proxy. Uh, Crystal, you, you make a good point that the two test teams have done a lot of work, but the two test teams came up with two options, and one of which we've kind of disregarded, and we've jumped right to, uh, to option B. Uh, part of the work that they did was uh, option A, and a lot of people uh, are in favor of option A. Amy, <coughs> excuse me, Amy. I can point out that no Simon. one made a motion uh, for option A when Ed said, are there any motions? There was plenty of time. <coughs> no one made a motion. So that's, and, and I'm on the team that gave forth both A and B. We gave forth uh, fraternal twins, if, you'll, if you wish. <laughs> um, and I wanted to try not to forget what I was going to say. Um, come back to me. <laughs> okay, Simon. Uh, and essentially because Chris because of Chris's amendment right now for business and ENT we're looking at the option a version so right now option a effectively is on the table via an amendment for these two divisions right. I, I, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with option a either um, especially in light of the other stuff that we've heard but that's both options are on the table and I want to get away from this idea that because the original motion was just for plan B and now that we've divided it that we can't consider plan a we can and we are right now actually Okay. Amy? I Dr. remembered. Amy? <laughs> I think one of the most important things to keep in mind is, is that 
the bottom line is how the teachers are teaching their curriculum in their classrooms. And whether, I know there are some colleges where PE reports to the same dean that English reports to. But the PE and English people don't teach the same. They teach their classes the way they're supposed to. So whether we maintain status quo or whether we split up some areas or move some areas, their courses are going to be taught the same way. They just, the faculty would be responding to a, perhaps a different leader, um, which can happen every year anyway with our one-year contracts. Um, and there might be some <laughs> more interdisciplinary programs going on. But um, I think none of this, A or B, is going to affect in any negative way what happens in the classroom because the teachers will still be teaching their curriculum. And that's, that's really the important part of it and that we have a leadership on the campus that can represent the faculty to the administration and help the faculty develop programs. I think that's what we need to look at. And, and when you were talking, uh, Chris, about a, a dean of uh, CTE, I don't know that we need a dean, a director is, is, is probably right. sufficient and that, as Bob was saying, isn't for us to decide in any case. But it's just that we have leadership in each of these areas to support them. All right, maybe it was Matt and then we'll go back to Rod. So I, uh, I got all of the emails from the, the business and the ENT faculty and I took their concerns quite seriously. When I, was, when I evaluate this business and workforce development division, the question that came into my mind was, um, what does a dean do? What do they provide the faculty? And in my mind, what a dean does is, is a dean man manages, which is not so something that necessarily requires um, curriculum expertise. In fact, in many of our existing divisions, there's no way that a dean would have any type of curriculum expertise across all of the diverse uh, programs that they manage, right? So for that reason, uh, the curriculum reason, I, that was not a reason for me to oppose this existing structure. One of the things that I did like about it was that it does address some of the things that Solomon mentioned in terms of the need for um, supporting these programs to be as best, as good as they can be through um, kind of administrative support and program redesign and everything that they need. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Amy, I have to disagree with you. Uh, I think uh, who you have at the head of division does have a very important part in the academic curriculum. If you drop down from uh, being a division with a dean, uh, you drop down out of uh, a lot of the decision-making processes that occur at the administration level. Uh, I think we're already seeing it right now with ENT and business. Uh, they lost their deans, and now all of a sudden, if you take a look at these plans, a lot of other divisions are trying to grab their their courses and and pull them over to their divisions. So I think it does make a big difference about who is heading your your uh, your division. I think that, uh, I guess, Chris, Chris, and then we're getting close to having to have to vote on this particular yes, item, decision. I believe, right? Because of time, it's constraints. Yeah. So, um, so I guess with my with my motion, I, I I'm open to the idea of a director instead of the assistant dean, um, and I think that if that's the way the committee feels and that's the way that we should go, then that makes absolute sense to me. I just kind of thought that the idea of having that is something that's good. Right. Um, so yeah, if, if we're moving towards a vote, I guess, I don't know, Simon, parliamentarily, would I just be able to make that change to my motion? Clarify it right now. Okay, yeah, then yeah, please. I'll clarify my motion to change, instead of a, fill the assistant dean director, but to create a, or assistant dean of CT to, to create a director of CTE position. Okay, so what is it that we're voting on? <laughs> motion <laughs> clarify right now, wait, 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 is wait. to yeah. change hang the, on, hold on, hang a second. hold on. Because your original motion, and that was uh, seconded, was to, in essence, uh, have the business and ETE programs continue as divisions, separate divisions, unrelated to any new business and workforce <coughs> development division, with those dean positions being filled. You didn't specify Whether as interim or permanent, that's right. open. Yeah. Um, is that correct? Yes. And that's the I motion can, on the floor then. Well, if I that, can clarify, 
that that will, if this is voted down, then we immediately go back to the initial plan B version. Right. Vote on then, not to say that that's our... We can have further yeah. discussion. And right. I have a couple of... I have just one comment, actually. Um, all of this is a recommendation that's going to go to two places, College Council, um, College Council and um, Academic Senate. The suggestion at College Council would be that now that we've got whatever plan or, or recommended plan that we have, is that the parties involved come together, develop a feasibility study, which they then present to the Academic Senate and the College Council. I think the why that hasn't happened yet is because this group hasn't made any recommendation yet. And so there hasn't been a chance. The reason that math hasn't, the reason that we've said computer science wants to move and that math hasn't been heard from is because math is refusing to consider it until they're told to consider it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's happening there. Right. And so that's, I, I think we, whatever recommendation we make, they come up with a feasibility study and then report back to the main two groups. Okay. Okay. I'd like to bring this question then to a, to a vote. Right. Is it sufficiently clear? No. Could you say it one more time? Sorry. Okay. So this motion is to continue on with uh, a business division and an ENT division. As both separate, as separate entities. As separate entities. Yes. Both of which would get deans. Not, cl not specified whether it's a you know, interim or permanent, just okay. they would have deans, right. as well as the creation of a director of CTE. Okay. Okay. Is it sufficiently clear? I'm going to ask uh, for a vote with a uh, show of hands. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, two, seven. All opposed. Five. Six. Abstain, abstention, one abstention, two abstentions, excuse me. Okay, um, okay, all right. I, okay. I'd like to call um, the question on architecture to VAMS. I'm sorry? I'd like to call up the question on architecture to VAMS. Okay, so in other words, you want to go to the fifth column? Yes, please. Okay, um, so the question is, should architecture be realigned into the VAMS division? Yes. Is that the question? Is that a question or a motion? It's already oh, a motion. I think there's a motion. Okay. So to clarify that question, it's should architecture move into VAMS? Is there discussion? Um, at the end. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Solomon. Uh, just to bring some information like to the committee, I mean, there's always, there was definitely uh, emails that everybody read, I'm assuming, about that particular uh, discussion. Um, currently, the way that architecture is actually set up, it's actually set up through the CTE department. It actually has its own <coughs> top code. It actually is through the chancellor's office that the current architecture program is, I guess, in the books with the state. So we're actually telling the state that we're preparing architectural engineering technology students for the workforce, according to the chancellor, because of the legacy program that has been instituted here for decades. Um, in the last 20 years or so, it has been transitioned from a workforce development program to a transfer program where they almost exclusively just focus on transfer and they transfer to a very specific uh, set of private schools. So that is the current situation. So we have a little sort of uh, dichotomy happening where it is under CTE or it is under ENT. The state thinks we're preparing workforce development, but in actuality, we're not. It's a transfer program in which it's de de sort of tagged more in the graphic arts or uh, arts, um, communication arts, typically. But it's not currently that state. So I just wanted to bring that to light, that currently, the, even though it's, it's destined to move to VAMS, uh, or like that's the question that we're considering, um, which is actually more in the reality of what ha what's happening, where they are focusing on transfer and there is a lot of commonality with transfer type of curriculum where there's an AA degree involved, uh, possibly, and there, I know they're, they're developing. Uh, so to leave them, so uh, that's sort of what I wanted to bring to light. One's the CT realm, which is actually in the books. That's not happening. And second is the transfer that is happening that is more to what VAMS actually is doing, so. Okay, thank you. Cindy? Um, I have um, spoken with Coleman, who is in architecture, about CTE programs. And he said the four, that most architectures need four-year degrees, and that's why they have always 
um, focused on making sure that their classes do transfer to four-year universities. That is his first priority, that his students um, can go on and transfer and get their four-year degree. He has said that possibly in the future he would look at a CTE certificate, but that he at this point did not feel there was much of an, a market for architecture students to be able to get a job after only two years whether they had a certificate or not. And that's why, though it does have a top code available at the Chancellor's Office, that's why a CTE program is, certificate program is not in place at this point. Thank you. Gary? Uh, I'm sorry uh, for going back, but the audience didn't hear the final tally of the vote, so they kind of flagged me down to see if you could. Um, it was uh, seven in favor of maintaining the uh, business and ENT divisions as they are with uh, under deans and a further recommendation of uh, a director of CTE, seven four, six opposed, one abstention. Two abstentions. Two abstentions? Right. Who, who was the second abstention? Gary. Didn't you abstain, Dan? Gary, Gary and, and, and Amy abstained. Okay. So seven, six, <clears throat> and two. Okay, uh, any other discussion on, on the issue right now, which is uh, moving architecture to VAMS? Simon. I, I'm confused as to whether um, Cindy and Solomon's comments were in favor or against moving <laughs> architecture to VAMS. <laughs> no, that's just information in terms of, so you guys understand that the nature of the architecture program is sort of, sort of, you know, it, it, it could, in other words, it's not really a CTE program, is what I heard you say. Correct. So That's what I'm trying to make sure program. you guys program. understand. It's, it's not more of a transfer, transfer program, program That's even though it's labeled under the CTE. And I further had that it's not the intention of the at least one architect, architecture faculty member to develop a CTE certificate because it doesn't seem to be a market for architects who have certificates or whatever type of student ends up with a a certificate in architecture. Correct. But then doesn't, doesn't Coleman Griffith, who also said that, also oppose the move? Um, I'm not sure. I believe that he wants to stay um, where he is, but I will not speak for him because um, but again, I think in his well, emails he was, a, he yeah. was but. But a lot of this yeah. boils down to personalities, yeah. folks. So, yeah. you know, you yeah. just have to accept and that. No, I, I, I would say that you really should, I, I would advocate that you should vote on the basis of exactly. the pedagogical issues, yeah. not yeah. the personalities involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, my um, comments were not meant to sway you right. one way or the other as to whether it should move or not. It was just further information okay. on the program itself. Thank you. Can we call the vote? Any other? Okay. So let's, let's uh, call the vote on this question, architecture to BAMS. So with a show of hands again, all in favor? Please raise your hand. One, two, three. Seven, eight, nine. All opposed? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Abstentions? Okay. All right, the next question on that same column is the fashion program to VAMS. Should we move the fashion program to VAMS? Are there, is there discussion? Katie? I would just remind the committee that fashion did say specifically they wanted to stay with architecture wherever they went. Oh. Thank you. Matt? Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the comment at the beginning was that fashion wanted to stay with architecture right. wherever they ended up moving or not moving. And graphic comms, though. Thank you. Both of them. Uh, Matt? I should also say that I visited the a faculty member who spoke today following the last meeting when they said that to get further clarification because I have a personal relationship with the fashion faculty. And I tried desperately to get them to, to, to pin them down on where they wanted to be. And they're, they were very open. They said quite clearly, we're just waiting how things fall out. We're happy here, but we could also see being happy in BAMS. So to me, that kind of negated the other, the comment they had made previously. Not that that provides people clarity. <laughs> quite the opposite. All right, thank you. Anything else on this issue, moving fashion to BAMS? Chris? So uh, does fashion have the same issue that architecture does, where they're really trying to focus on a four-year degree, or are they much more centered for CTE, which is what it seems like, right? They do have CTE certificates in place, and they have been working to keep them up 
updated. And they do re receive uh, CETEA funds on a somewhat irregular basis. Crystal, then Matt. I'd like to say, though, that I see a lot more pedagogical alignment with FAMS than I do with business progression, particularly in the areas of design. Matt? And I would say that's one of the uh, one of several programs at the college that does both. They're transferring students and they're also completing certificates. Okay. Any further discussion about moving fashion to Vans? I John? just I had, I wonder why we keep bringing up this CTE element. Is it because if you're more closely aligned with CTE, then you should belong in ENT as opposed to VAMS? Is there some reason we're bringing that up each time? Is one division more closely aligned with CT? That's a great question. I think good question. I think the assumption is is that business would have a stronger relationship with CTE, even though I think you make a good point that that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion, Simon? No, I guess it sort of comes down to um, this is the same argument that Graphics Communication has been making in its emails, where graphic design is more making a statement through art. Graphic Communications is printing something onto something. Um, and I suppose, does most of our, um, I'm not very familiar with the graphic programs, I'm sorry, I'm a math major. Um, do, do, does the fashion program in general, if anyone here knows, focus more on fashion as an art and a statement, like walking the runway and doing some crazy thing, or is it more packaging material and packaging um, clothes for consumers and for you know general consumption? No, they do everything from design to, I mean, cutting, measuring, and making patterns and fabricating uh, the patterns in a CAD program and coming up with their own design elements. I mean, they, they do have a very nice continuum from a CT certificate all the way to transfer. So it's nice. both. Nice. Correct. Nice. Okay. Should we go ahead and vote on this one? I'll say one, sorry, <laughs> one more thing, which is that uh, that kind of hybrid program that does uh, transfer and CTE, there are several programs like that in BAMS, like photography, like graphic design. Digital media, all of the digital media programs. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a vote on this one. <laughs> so all in favor of moving fashion to VAMS, again, with a show of hands, please say aye. Oh, raise your hands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. All opposed? One, two, Two, abstentions, three. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next issue, the movement of graphic communications to VAMS. Is there qu uh, comments, questions? Uh, Amy, then Simon. I think there was Ron. some fairly compelling argument on the e internet, on the emails, on the uh, to <laughs> keep graphic communications not in VAMS from both sides, okay. if I recall correctly. I agree. I think there was some compelling arguments from both the VAMS people and the graphic communications people to keep them separated for curricular reasons. Do you mean to keep Not them in their- Not personality reasons. <laughs> Amy, for clarification, to keep them in the current division, which is ENT? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Simon? I agree. Rod? And uh, yes, I've, I've heard from several VAMS faculty since it's my division, and uh, there are very sound reasons um, arguments to be made for n having the two programs be separated by divisions. Okay, thank you. Crystal? Um, I concur with Amy, Simon, and Rod, and ask <laughs> that we call the vote. Okay. All right. So the vote has been called. So, uh, so the question right now is, because the motion was graphic communication to VAMS. So VAMS. So if you think that they should not be in VAMS, you should vote no. <laughs> All right, and then we can entertain another, another. <laughs> this, is a, this is a motion to move graphic communication to VAMS. All those in favor. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Just have to count. 15. Okay. Is there another motion? Is there abstentions? Uh, any abstentions? Okay. Is there another motion related to graphic communication? I call up the question on computer science to VAMS. Oh, com <laughs> 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 I have <laughs> 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 okay. 
computer science to math. Okay. He's calling okay. the question, so there's, there's no opportunity for discussion on that? No, no, I'm bringing it forward. Bringing forward. the okay. question. Right, right, right. Bringing it forward. We're, okay, we're so we're moving that. forward. Okay. The next one is computer science to math. Is there a discussion? Rod? Yeah, just to reiterate a concern I expressed earlier, and that is we haven't heard from the math people. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea from their point of view. We have heard from the computer science people. Uh, I don't believe they're unanimous, um, but there seems to be strong sentiment um, in the direction of the motion. But um, I would recommend a no vote on this at this time, um, realizing that um, we really need to hear from all the parties before we make a decision. Simon? Um, I think you were actually um, checking in your class when I made the comment that whatever we forward as a recommendation, the math department hasn't really had a full discussion about it because they haven't been told that this is a firm possibility, so they're not going to discuss it until it comes out. Um, since this is a recommendation to two bodies bigger than ourselves, um, my recommendation at the College Council is going to be that we then take the parts that we have said should move, get them to get together and work on a feasibility study, and as part of that, would be the question of, well, do we, does it work? Does it not work? What are the issues? And from the math professors that I talked to, since this is my, this is my major as well, um, it's very aligned. Um, it's helpful. Uh, computer science is definitely a mathematics course. They take so much math during their period. They take more than a math major does. So it, it, it's the perfect fit, and I don't know why it wasn't done a long time ago. Thank you. OK, any other questions or comments about this one? Okay. I'm just not sure Amy? why math hasn't chimed in uh, because we certainly heard from VAMS when they heard that some other areas might be coming into their area and it's just the whole process has been open for discussion so um, I respect the fact that math hasn't said anything but sometimes that maybe means that they're indifferent. Okay. Lauren? I did meet in the last week with some professors because I really wanted to hear the faculty's voice. Um, and the issue for math was until there's something driving, they just weren't going to move forward with this. Yeah, Meaning, yeah. it wasn't, but, but again, I don't think it was good or bad. I think when you say indifference, I think that that's probably the best. You know, and, and that's stating an opinion too, right? So I, I think that I respect that. Simon? I have a question. How many math faculty, uh, uh, math faculty, how many computer science faculty there are there? There are three, is that correct? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all, and all time. three are here, correct? <laughs> <laughs> and all three have agreed, right, I believe, that this was a good move? Yes. I thought so. I just wanted to. I think we have a comment coming forward. Come forward They're coming please. forward, yeah. Computers? Bring them all in. All the computers. computers. Come, come on, computers. On. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think we're all open to moving to math. I think it could be a good idea, provided math is welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> there are about 50 math <coughs> faculty. Um, if they're not happy with us being there, it's not going to be very pleasant. So. That's a good point. Okay. Nice Do you have any comments on the pedagogical alignment of computer science to math as some other It's a great match. I'm sorry? It's a great match. It's a great match. Uh, computer science and math is a great match. Uh, it's the personnel issue. Mm, so, we're not supposed to talk about that. And, and the, the, the body that this decision is going to be um, moving to, uh, is that a body like this where there's a discussion or is one person making a decision or a group making a decision without outside input? Well, if I've understood the discussion so far, there will be a further recommendation coming from both the College Council and the Academic Senate. Okay. So you will have more opportunities for input in those forums. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, there was one thing I said last week, which, uh, which I think Simon, Simon reiterated today. A computer science major here takes more math than a math major does. And we have a problem with the coordination of scheduling, which is keeping students here too long. And moving computer science to math would be the best benefit for the student, and I think that's what our job is. What is the best benefit for the student? Okay, thank you. 
All right, John. I just want to agree with uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Ulmer, uh, in that I don't want to hear much more about the silent majority. This has been an open process, and I've just heard from the people I've heard from, and I keep hearing there's these great amounts of people, the majority out there, who don't go along with this, but I would rather go with the information that's been presented. Okay, thank you. I'd like to close okay. the question. Yes. All right, so on this motion to move computer science to math, with a show of hands, all in favor? Fifteen. All opposed? Thank you. Unanimous. The final one in this realignment column, uh, kinesiology to natural sciences. Is there? Yes, Katie. I would just like to speak, uh, talk to quite a few faculty in the natural sciences since that's my division and um, in terms of we would welcome kinesiology with very open arms. There's a lot of enthusiasm for some of the crossover we could do with exercise physiology and people are actually fairly excited about the idea. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions about this, this motion? Yes, Amy? Just, just a hallway conversation that um, although it, sounded at the last time I was here that the um, kinesiology people really wanted to go to natural sciences, that there was a possibility that they only agreed on that because they felt they had to move somewhere, and that given other options, they might opt to stay where they are. But I don't think that is going to be an option based on the way the curriculum is going. Would you, would <coughs> Bob, do you have any ideas on that? I, the chancellor's office and what they've been saying about PE courses. I think it's very difficult to predict the future. Um, I think that the decision that uh, that we might make today should be based upon more along the lines of what Katie mentioned, which is that that uh, from a curricular fit point of view and an ability again to use the the, the synergy word again for the, the, the synergistic aspects of what kinesiology and health can do in the natural sciences and vice versa. That might be the, the better way to decide this uh, point at this point than it would be to predict what's going to happen at the state level. Thank you. Okay. And for any other comments or questions there? Hold the question, please. Okay. So all in favor of uh, kinesiology moving to natural sciences, please raise your hand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fourteen. All opposed? Abstentions? All right. I'd like uh, to call the question on the CEC, please. Yes, the CEC issue is next. So the question here is, uh, I suppose, should CEC continue with an assistant dean? Yeah. Well, sh sh should it move forward with an assistant forward dean? Assistant. It doesn't, it currently has a, a, a full dean. The position is not filled at the moment. Um, Okay. And uh, at the moment, uh, it is reporting to me as a vice president of educational services. Okay. And with the various programs that you see listed under CEC. Right, including one that the, the cosmetology is a credit program. Right. Okay. Uh, Simon? What is the difference uh, between this CEC plan and the CEC plan of option A? The CEC plan of option A basically would. Um, request that the district hire a full dean to uh, manage the CEC if uh, Dean Hodge does not return to that position. And at the moment, it's not anticipated that Dean Hodge will return to that position. So the only difference is dean versus an assistant dean? That would be, well, and also the reporting line. At the moment, it's reporting to the VP of Educational Services. And uh, so if this group decided that it wanted it to report to the VP of Instruction, it could certainly make that recommendation. And with the greatest respect to Ed Services Department, I would agree. Um, it should probably go to instruction. And given that the CEC is such a big area, um, I would actually recommend a full dean. Uh, I think it was Lauren, then John, and Rod. Why do you think it's such a big my, my question here's, I'm so confused. Why is there not food at this meeting? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, why is there not alcohol at this? <laughs> that, 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 that was on tape. Okay. <laughs> um, where are they currently reporting? Are they current? Because Danny Hammond's 
was asking that they report to the VP of Instruction. Is that currently not taking place? That is currently not taking place. And that was because Dr. Bell was wearing the number of hats that he was wearing, the Dean of Business, the Dean of ENT, the Vice President of Instruction, and the Vice President of Student Services, that there would, it was decided that there should be a little division of labor in the interim while we sort out what it is that's going to happen. Okay, so my next question is should this then be two votes? One for the dean versus assistant dean, and the second, where do they report? Well, right now the, the, there is a motion basically to affirm the language that's in that uh, fourth column. If I'm not mistaken. But then we're going to go to John. Rod, and then we'll come back to Simon. Yeah, my understanding is the CEC has been the division that mainly see, uh, provide, presides over non-credit instruction. That's correct. And we, in the Learning Assistance Center, we have non-credit courses. So whenever I need to modify a course or, or propose a course, I've been going through the dean or the uh, the CEC. Uh, the CEC. So uh, would that mean that? that element of the Learning Center would then go under Ed Services too, or, and I don't Which know element of learning the, the non-credit courses. Well, the whole CEC at the moment is, 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 is reporting to the VP of Educational Services, but it doesn't have to continue that way. It's just, again, it was something to do in the interim while we were working through our, our issues <laughs> and our needs. Rod? Um, the faculty at the CEC are pretty much unanimous about wanting to have a full dean and to continue to report to the VPI. Simon? Yeah, I'm going to argue that the areas that we have assistant deans under um, are not as big or wide as the CEC, and especially I didn't realize that um, the dean, that the LIC had to go through the, the dean of CEC. Um, so I would like to move to amend um, striking assistant um, and striking ed services, replacing it with instruction. I'll second. Okay, so there is first an <laughs> amendment then that has been seconded to um, approve CC, but with changing assistant dean to dean and reporting to the VP of instruction. Is that correct? Okay. Any further comment on that, Matt? Yeah, I, Bob. I was wondering if you could speak to the scale of the operation at the CEC that Simon was mentioning. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, at the current time, we have uh, seven or six, six or seven full-time CEC faculty, approximately 90 to 95 adjuncts. Uh, the programs that you're looking at here, for the most part, are relatively small programs with the exception of the non-credit ESL, which is by far the largest program over at the CEC right now. Uh, cosmetology is a very healthy CTE program and uh, continues to do very well. Uh, but again, the balance of these programs are relatively small programs. Uh, Amy? Yeah, I want to point out or remind us that one of the reasons we were changing this dean, whether it's an assistant or a full, to report to the VP of Ed Services was to uh, spread out some of the workload for the Vice President of Instruction. And um, because the Vice President of Educational Services can handle this, and maybe. <laughs> and um, it just, uh, that was one of the reasons. Before going on, I do want to point out that Bob Bell is a member of the committee, but he isn't here today, and I think it's because he is just so busy with a number of other <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I think it was uh, Solomon, and then. Yeah, I just wanted to, I mean, I, I know very little of the CEC except that uh, some of the students that I have welcomed that come over from the CNC and that I've helped out even some faculty from the CEC do, uh, let's just say, align themselves with some of the objectives that the uh, uh, VP of Ed Services does with a lot of the outreach to the community and s fulfilling a lot of community goals and a lot of student sort of type of goals versus curricular goals. Not that I'm saying that they're not teaching, they are teaching, but yet the, let's just say the overwhelming outcomes that the CC provides is definitely more um, community driven, I'll put it to them. Okay. Uh, there was John over here. Yeah. Um, the CEC currently has an assistant 
manager somehow. I don't know what the title the, is. The uh, CEC has a classified, uh, let's see, uh, I believe the title that Ibrahim has is manager of operations. Oh, it's okay. a classified uh, management That's position. That's changed. Yeah, it used to be something different. But why, I'm wondering why they have that, and uh, especially it, in light of the fact that the programs are small, as it, you mentioned. Back some years ago, the CEC had a full dean and an assistant dean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for a variety of reasons, um, which is not inappropriate to get into in this forum. Okay. Uh, a decision was made to for it to be a classified manager position that would report to the uh, the full dean. Well, and that's I, what Ibrahim is right now. I'm just proposing that uh, maybe uh, since part of our call here was to save some money for the school, maybe we could eliminate that position if we're going to go with a full dean there. I mean, not Ibrahim in particular. This is not personal. <laughs> Uh, but just have one manager there. I mean, I think English would love to have an assistant manager. A lot of people would. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I, first of all, that, that, that's not for this body to decide. But I will tell you that there are a great deal of moving parts over in the CEC right now, and particularly even more so now that health science is over there. So, uh, you know, I think that operationally there are things that take place in that building that need to be resolved, whether that's under one manager or two managers. I can't speak to at this point. Chris? Uh, on the subject of whether it should be VP for Ed or, or VP for Instruction, um, I, I totally respect the fact that, that Dr. Bell is doing so much right now, but is that because, basically, is, it, is this unable to be done under the purview of the responsibilities of the VP for Instruction, or just because he has so many other things that he has going on that it makes it difficult for him to do it? Yeah. Again, we need to separate what's happening now from what we want to happen in the future. Exactly. So if, 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 if the pleasure of this group is that the CEC report to the Vice President of Instruction, then this group should take that action and we should move forward. But remember, this is an interim plan. Right. Simon? Um, I'm, I'm sort of, I, I, I kind of agree both with, given that it's an interim, um, spreading the workload, workload is a great idea, but then again, just sort of generally, I would suggest that instruction is probably a better fit in some ways. But I'm kind of swayed, but what I haven't heard is a compelling argument for an assistant dean versus a dean. And so I still maintain, if we look at the departments that have assistant deans, they're smaller than 95 adjunct faculty, plus all of the moving parts that are so important that we need to have a manager of operations too. So um, with hey, all Amy, of this. I'm sorry, Simon. Amy, what's the size of your division, full-time versus adjunct, roughly? I have, uh, twice as many adjunct as I have full-time. So what's roughly the numbers? Oh, I have uh, about 40 full-time and 60 adjunct. OK. And Ted, what about your division? What's your? Um, Not twice as many. Yeah. Well, besides the, the faculty that we share, which makes it a number in the full-time, it's 38 to 40, depending on if you're counting, where they're counting them, and then, I don't know, 70 adjunct, something like so 30, that? 38 to 40 full-time, 70 adjuncts, 40 full-time, 60 plus but they're adjuncts. they're on reassigned time. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> but again, uh, again though, I also, I don't think that it's an argument to stack the CEC against the other academic divisions as to why it doesn't deserve a dean. I think it's a quest question of is it big enough to warrant a dean? And I think that yeah. it is, even if it's smaller than some of the other bigger divisions, I think it's big enough. Yeah, I was just trying to point out the, 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 you know, the, the size of the full-time versus adjunct, so. Um, I just want to go back just briefly to the idea of whether CEC reports to uh, instruction or ed services. As long as, for many years, um, but not always, CEC has reported to instruction has come to the table with the deans. And it's been very valuable to know what's going on at CEC, but except with the exception of the ESL, I haven't felt that it was part of what we were talking about at the table, to, to be honest and on camera. <laughs> okay. Rod? Um, historically, the CEC's reported to 
a position very much like the VP of Ed Services and to instruction both. And uh, when it was moved under instruction, that was done to better align it with the other instructional divisions. And uh, on, the, uh, on the topic of, you know, what level the administrator over there should have, uh, remind everybody that the CEC is its own kind of mini campus. And uh, so there's all the responsibilities in, that are entailed with being, you know, another facility for the college and, uh, you know, coordinating things with the facilities department and other parts of the college as well. Okay. Thank you. Ted. Okay. Uh, Ted, Ted. Ted. I think that call a question. I just, I want to make a comment about the, the notion of the reporting line in which VP that they would report to. Um, you know, that, that seems like currently it's a very pragmatic decision that was made. Um, there's no question that instruction takes place over there, but whether or not that's happening doesn't mean they can or cannot be around the table with the deans. We've, we've got uh, currently Cynthia Olivo, who's in um, student services, but she's part of the dean's meeting, so we can still have that interaction. We can still address those areas. I, I personally feel like one thing is the integrity of the, of the programs themselves as far as which VP has to administratively handle that, that's up to you guys to have to deal with that. And um, I don't see that as something that this body really even needs to address. It's not, we're not talking about changing the instructional programs that do take place. That, that's a, a practical decision as who has to handle the paperwork. That, that's my opinion about it. Simon? Uh, given that my, my amendment deals with both areas, I, um, I'd like to divide my amendment and vote on them separately. Um, so I'd like to request that we vote on whether or not I should be an assistant dean versus a dean and vote separately on whether it should report to VP Ed, VP Instruction, or we don't care. The only clarification I would make to that is remember that you're voting on a recommendation to as to whether you have a, a dean or an assistant dean. Oh, yes. None of this actually matters. Right. <laughs> I, I, I'm really curious if Bob wants to comment on who they should be reporting to. Or... Um, you know, I have a lot to do. So if someone took this off my plate and put it on somebody else's plate, I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. However, I would say that um, at the end of the day, for all of this, we're going to have to live within our means, and we're going to have to make decisions that fiscally make sense at the, at, at, at the moment. Um, and um, I personally have heard a lot of compelling arguments that from the faculty, in particular, it says, you know what, it doesn't really matter who we report to as long as we are supported in terms of how we run the programs that we run and, and teach in. So at the end of the day, uh, this committee's work is important and honored, but it's a piece of information as we move forward. So we'll just have to wait and see how it all, how it all plays out. Okay. So I'd like to there call was a motion to divide those two items, Dean and uh, the reporting line. I okay, was that seconded? Okay, seconded. All right, so let's, shall we go ahead and vote on those items? Okay. All right, uh, on the question of whether CEC should have, let's see, should have a dean as opposed to an assistant dean, right? Is that clear? Yes means dean, no means assistant right. dean. Right, all those in favor of dean. Okay, we do that. all right, raise your hand, please. All those in favor of assistant, all in favor of dean or assistant dean? as opposed to as assistant, opposed to dean. assistant dean. dean. In favor? Yes. As opposed to an assistant dean. Okay. Keep your hands up, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those opposed? One, two. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you are recommending that CEC have a dean as a, rather than an assistant dean. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. Do we need to vote again? No, Sorry. you got well, my head. Oh, wasn't it, it was not clear before? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So seven I, yes. I have to admit, I'm not clear at this point. So <laughs> I'm going to ask for a revote there. Okay, uh, whether to recommend Ed, a dean. I'm wondering, since um, what's on this sheet is an assistant dean, yes. that we're actually changing this and saying it's the opposite vote. To have a dean rather than an assistant no, dean. No, to have an assistant dean vote in favor of the assistant and not dean. a dean, because <clears throat> that's what's on here. Uh, but, but. I believe that Simon's motion was to amend, was to amend it to, uh, in favor of a dean rather than an assistant dean. Is that correct, Simon? Yes. 
and we're voting on the amendment separately. So, so, so clearly, to, speak it, to, to say it again clearly, if I can get it out of my mouth, the motion is all those in favor of having a full dean, a dean of the Community Education Center, signify by saying yes. Oh, raise your hand, please, so I can count. Everybody, Sorry. raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. And those opposed, please raise your hand. Three, four. Okay. Uh, and abstentions. That's a lot of abstentions. Five. Good Lord. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's All right. Okay. okay. So, 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 those numbers? so it's six yes for a full dean as opposed to four no as a plus five abstentions. So six of the members of the committee carry the day and indicate that there would be the recommendation this body is a full dean or a, a, a division dean, if you will, similar to the division deans that we have uh, at the moment. Okay. The second part of uh, that amendment was to have the CEC dean reporting to the VP of instruction. Is that correct? Okay. Was that seconded? Gary's got a question. So. And is oh, that wait, hold on. Was that, hold on. Was that seconded? Chris left, but yes. Okay. And and is that with the assumption that if it's not instructional, it'll go back, it'll stay as the educational services? No, it, it, it would actually change it to report to the VP of instruction, correct? So if, if we vote, say yes, no, if it fails, it'll just default to educational services. Right. Okay, it, I yeah, just want to make sure. That's correct. Okay, any questions there? All right, all in favor of the motion to have that dean, the CC dean reporting to the <laughs> VP of instruction, raise your hand. Three, four. All opposed. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Four to four. Uh, abstentions. The abstentions. Come before again, right? Yeah, One, two, three, four, five. Five abstentions. Now, do we get to break it? Or so no? we get to break it. Okay. So I vote uh, no. You vote no. No. So it remains with the VP of, Instru of Educational Services. All right. Uh, any other? Do we need any other uh, votes on the CEC then issue? Just to approve it as a whole with those changes. Right. To approve the CEC uh, item with a dean reporting to the VP of Educational Services and the various programs that you see listed there. All right. So is there? Uh, there's a motion already. So let's call the question. All in favor of that CEC realignment, please signify by raising your hand. Keep it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All opposed? One, two, and abstentions. One. Okay, thank you. And does that bring us? Library. Library. Uh, we okay. have not dealt with interim deans or library. Okay. All right, so should we go now to the interim deans, yeah, the second column? So the proposal is that we have math and VAMS continue with their interim deans. Is there any discussion here? Simon? Uh, Lauren mentioned earlier that she maybe wanted to put a uh, library under this column. Is that still the case? Mm -hmm. And since we have someone from the library here, um, can I ask them how they would feel about that? Well. Krista, in front of the mic, please. Thank you. Our, our first choice was to be un, under a permanent dean, and our second choice was interim dean. It's just you, you didn't have that information as part of this chart, but that's, that's what it says. Okay. Great. Katie? Does the library have a current dean? Yes. Yeah, uh, there's an uh, associate dean of the library right now, Marianne Lawn. Retiring. He's retiring, effective July or June 30th. Yeah. She's a division. Division, what? division dean of the library. Yeah. Division dean of the library, is that what it is? Yes. Division dean. Okay. Effectively their own <coughs> realignment. Yeah. And as, as, as I understand the process, um, under Dean Lawn in the library, there has been a lot of discussion with Dr. Bell about the succession plans. And it's my understanding that um, 
Dean Lawn is uh, supportive of this column, but I don't know. The succession plan actually says, can, uh, fill the position with a permanent dean position. And then the second choice, if, we, if that's not possible, is to fill the retirement with an interim dean. That's what, it, that's what the succession plan is. It's not a mysterious thing. It just has a list of these three things. Uh, the third one would be another option. And, and they'd, they'd be working it out, Crystal. So uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, Ted and Crystal. I would say uh, among all this conversation, we have one area where m most of it is being worked out in their own process that they've already had in place from the get-go, I would not feel comfortable arbitrarily putting it into another column. They're working on it. They've got it in place. We should keep it separate, do with it separate, and... and okay, okay, can I Thank just you. say, it's, there's no <coughs> process. It's been presented to um, Dr. <coughs> Bell, but what it says fits in very nicely with this chart. Right. It just somehow, it didn't get listed this way because we had already approached Dr. Bell with this plan, but what it says, and if we can send it to you. It says, put us in this first column. If that's not possible, put us in the second column. Right. That's and, what it and, says. And, and I think a person should respect that. Um, and Except not, that it would be nice to have it settled sooner rather than later. That's, so I don't but, think but, we would have a problem with being settled. considered in this. Okay. In this but, but it is being settled as a separate item. I, I mean, it's its it own is. plan. It just got listed separately for some reason. I'm not sure why, but what it says fits in with these, this chart that you have. The reason it was listed separately was to yes. respect the library faculty and staff who were working on a succession plan and to take us out of it. That's okay. why. That's exactly why. Because right. we knew a process was taking place and we didn't feel the need to interfere with that process. Okay, there's no process. We just want to make sure we know what's happening July 1st. That was the whole reason for the succession plan. I, I think that what's being said is that the fact that the library created a succession plan is that we will simply say to the College Council and the Academic Senate that they've already created a plan of their own and that is our recommendation that the library plan be implemented. Well, no, I, I, what this column says verbatim is that the vice president of instruction and library faculty to, to address succession plan. So what that says to me is, is that between the library and Dr. Bell, they will work out a succession plan, whatever that plan is going to be. Well, can I just say that any, any area could have come up with a succession plan. We just took some initiative to do it because we're very worried about what's going to happen right. on July 1st. If we had known this chart was yeah. going to become a possibility, we might have done it a different way. And in that case, um, I actually like the faculty succession plan as is. Um, I don't think it needs to be tweaked. And when we get to that item, I would like to actually suggest that we forward the faculty, um, the library act plan as our recommendation as well. Uh, Lauren? I, I, I support what Simon says. The only reason I chose the second column interim dean is because it seemed to fit a little bit better with that because you don't have a current dean, but if the succession plan, they will not have it. So now you're just getting like a one year appointment type thing, and that's where the interim idea came from. So if it supports the librarians that their request for a permanent dean as opposed to a one year interim dean, then I agree that we should just move forward with the succession plan. Does that make sense? Point of order, aren't, aren't we dealing with column two right now? No. Didn't we go back oh, to that? No, because we, we never Our took a vote was column on two, that. but there was a motion to move the library column into that. That's that correct. One. It wasn't a motion, a mo it was just a, dis or a discussion. It was point of discussion. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead then with the vote uh, on column two, continuing math and VAMs with continuing, uh, excuse me, with their interim deans. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, let's take a vote. All in favor of that one? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All opposed? And abstentions? One. Okay. Can we now go back to the library? Now we're going back to the library. No. 
Okay, so uh, the library's uh, proposal is that the VP of instruction and the library faculty are to address a succession plan. Any further discussion there? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. The, the fact that it says address versus implement or move forward with um, concerns me mildly because I think the fact that the library's issue is that they don't want to continue to address and address and address. They want to just have something settled. And I know that nothing we do here is settled anyway, so don't get me wrong. Um, but the fact that it says just even address and that we're not recommending anything to the library. Um, I've seen the succession plan. I think it's good. I think most of us have seen the succession plan. Um, if not, it was definitely in one of the emails. And we should actually support the succession plan and support the library faculty. And that should be our recommendation. That our recommendation being that the, between the VP for instruction and the library, um, planning and priorities recommends that succession plan be implemented. Is that a motion? Is there, um, and I would so move that amendment. Okay. So, so uh, you would write to to um, what exactly would it say? Right. VP so we, and we library that? faculty, um, VP and li VPI and library to implement library succession plan. A VP and library faculty to develop a succession plan? Implement, implement, to, imp to but, implement. But if you implement it, that doesn't accept what their plan is. They have three options in their plan. Right. So, so they've got to develop and implement. It still has to be developed. developed. It's developed, but they want, they, they want have step one, step two, step three. They really Option. want step one, full-time dean. Right. But that would be for the process to work its to way work through out. between uh, the VP of instruction and them. Which, so what it would be. So they would develop it or finalize it and implement it. Recommend a full-time dean, couldn't we? And you can recommend that to Dr. Bell. If this, well, they this have. Implement, that's what I'm saying. So I, I think Amy said it correctly. <coughs> this is written the way it's written, although it can be tweaked, certainly, because we took it out of the purview of this body because we knew there was another process that was, that was taking place. I think we thought we were doing good by doing that. <laughs> right. I, I think that gives more discretion to the library faculty in discussion with the VP of instruction. Does it not? Perhaps a friendly amendment library we say endorse? Perhaps to recommend um, option one from the library succession plan would be the best way. Could you go back? And could, if I could ask Krista? Sorry. So you've only had one meeting. So this is in discussion still, is that yes, correct? Yes, we, we weren't sure of this whole process, and so we made up a, a plan mm -hmm. and presented it to Dr. Bell. But, uh -huh. but you have I not said, yet made a decision. It's still in discussion. Is that right? Well, if it was up to us to make a decision, we would have made it. But we, 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 it had, a decision has not been made to my knowledge. OK. Because I think we thought it was going to go through this process. But I don't know. I, yes, Amy? Um, I also think one of the reasons we pulled it out separately was because with the columns one and two, those interims and permanent deans are in place. With right. the library, the dean is there. She is expected to retire. She hasn't gone yet. So it was kind of sort of reaching beyond us to decide what should happen there. I think that's why we left it to you guys. I hear what you're saying. You want us to make a decision so it'll have more weight, right? Well, and so we'll know what's going to happen July 1st. But we're not yes. deciding. We're just moving it forward. Okay. Right. Then I'd like to just change my amendment to actually just read that VP and library um, recommended um, planning and priorities recommends option one for the faculty succession plan, for the library faculty succession plan. Um, uh, option one, you mean nothing changes? And option one being the permanent dean. Option one of their plan, which is the permanent dean. We could uh, yes. vote no on this, and uh, wouldn't that leave the status quo in place, which is a permanent dean? It would do nothing. It, would, it wouldn't even leave anything in place. And, and then in any situation, if you've got an administrative position where the person is retiring, then there's the possibility of an interim being selected or, or the, I mean, that, that it leaves it wide open. If Marianne actually retires, then it's like any other situation regardless of realignment, right? So we're not really, whether or not we're discussing permanent or interim, even if we say we need a permanent position, we have a, reti a retiree, we might end up with an interim 
while they search for a permit or something like that. I think this is kind of beyond the purview of what we're doing here right now. I see Kristen and then Lauren, I think. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I guess the reason we <coughs> came up with this plan was because we saw what happened with other divisions where the dean retired and there was no plan. There was no interim in some cases. And so, so you, you know, yes, team? in the past it's happened where there would be an interim and then right. we decide what we're doing, but that's not what's happening right now. And so I think that's why we wanted to have something some right. suggestions in place so that we we'll, we can start on July 1st and know what's going to happen. And, and this body wanted to completely and totally respect that. Lauren? I, I support what you're saying and that's what I was going to say as well. I, I, I just want to be sure that the library is taken care of. This is a, a group that all of us use the library and to so. me it's very, I, I, I guess I'm very compassionate about the idea that if this is a group of individuals that all of us work with, that, that, we, that we support them 100%. Um, hearing Ted and Amy, I'd like to with, withdraw my amendment um, <laughs> with the understanding that the process, w w hopefully with administrative assurance, that this process will continue and the library will have a plan in place and that that will be settled before so, um, anyone retires. I. I can't make any pledges. I mean, for all I know, Dr. Bell may be wear, wear another hat when the, when the dust settles if Marianne does, in fact, decide that she is, is, is retiring. I, who knows? I, I, I don't know. All we can do is put a recommendation on the table as part of our process, and then after that, we'll go forward. Uh, I'd like to move that uh, we uh, eliminate column six and add to column one a permanent dean for the library. I think we've got to call the, we've got to deal with the questions on the table first, right? Uh, we, right, right now a, we're in a motion to um, yet, have the library, but we could actually, yeah, you could just make that as an amendment <laughs> to strike library and push it into the, and push, and put it with permanent dean. That's step one of their plan and the most important part of your plan and that shows that we support it and it's cleaner, it's right in the column there with permanent deans. So I think that that would be um, an amendment to your motion, Simon. Is that acceptable? Uh, yes. Um, it will, what would be acceptable is if uh, John made a motion um, to strike the current text and replace the words permanent dean per option one of faculty plan or something. Well, I, I think that the motion was simply to eliminate that last column with library and put library in the first column where it says In that case, we should vote no on what we're doing right now and make a new motion. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so, the current, All right. I, so the current motion on the table, if I understand it correctly, is to accept column six or not. Okay. Right? Column six as worded. As worded. Is that Maybe clear? before we do that, because that will leave people feeling a little insecure that you don't have anything on the table, is we should re-vote on column one, including the permanent dean of the library. Then you've got that in place. Then we can go ahead and eliminate six if we want to. Okay. So that's what you would suggest that we that's do after, suggest. after we get through this issue. So well, I think everybody's heard that. Okay. If I can make a comment about that. Okay. If the criteria of column one is that where there are current deans in place, they, they were left there and the criteria for column two is that where there's currently an interim dean in place, we leave the interim dean there. In keeping with that, then what John said fits. It, it's a, and, and, and with any of these, if, if, I, if I announce my retirement tomorrow, then there'll probably be an interim dean in my division or something would happen. I mean, the, whatever we're doing now is not going to have an influence on, on the administrative um, mechanisms that have to come into place when there's a, a vacancy. So we're, we're really just dealing with the notion of there being a dean at the library as opposed to a director or something less. Rod, then Simon. The, the problem at this point in the year with filling the position permanently for fall is uh, we probably can't move to fill the position until it's vacant. And then uh, we're in summer and it's impossible to get a faculty hiring committee together at that time. And um, that's the reason we have the interim deems we have, is um, that these were uh, replacements that were hired over the summer by informal hiring committees. 
but to do, to do it permanently is going to require having college be in session and faculty be on campus. I think what I heard, though, is that if we were to place the library under continuous permanent deans, because right now the library does have a permanent dean, so shunt it into that column because we don't predict the future um, as much as we may want to. Um, and then when the library dean position becomes vacant, we deal with it as we do with math and VAMs. I think that's what... We, we deal I've, with it the way that we always deal with the vacancy. So in that case, it would be appropriate to put library under the first column by the sounds of that. And so I would move to lay this current motion on the table so that we can re-vote on continue with permanent dean's column. Katie, I think I something. I would just suggest that we, with this discussion that we've just had, that we just vote down the current motion so that then someone else could bring that motion forward yes. and that we all have faith that someone will bring that motion forward. Right. Someone will bring that motion forward. Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So, so the motion to, I'm sorry, what was it? Uh, so it's basically all in favor of column six, VP and library okay. faculty to address succession plan okay. signify by holding your hand up. One, two, three, and all opposed. Any okay, abstentions? So the motion fails. Any abstentions? Any abstentions? One, two. Two abstentions? No, two. Two abstentions. Two. Okay. All right. Is there a further motion that anyone wants to make? Yeah, I move that we reopen uh, the uh, the column one motion. I, I really don't know how to state this stuff. Uh, that we re look at column one and vote again after we've included a permanent dean for the library. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, Katie. so that's been uh, moved and Katie. seconded. Katie. Katie. Just friendly clarification, we're moving the library to column one. Correct. Right. Right. Basically. Okay. Once we, well, Any further we discussion? Once we reopen it. Right. No questions. All right, all in favor of that motion to move the library to the first column, continue with permanent deans, raise your hand. Fine. Nine. Nine. All opposed? One. Okay. Abstentions? Two, three. Three. Okay. Four. Four. All right. Okay. I think that brings us to the end, does it not? It does. <coughs> Can we just have one final review so we know what's going forward? Okay, so I can figure Beverly, it out. Let, 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 me, let me see if I can state it. Beverly, we'll have wow. to check all the numbers here. Yeah. But let's, let's start with column one, yeah. okay? okay. Uh, continue with permanent deans to include the library. Nine yes, one no, four abstentions. Okay, column two, continue with interim deans. 13 yes, zero no's, one abstention. Uh, to continue with a business division and an ENT division and to fill a director or dean of CTE, whatever is decided, 13, uh, excuse me, seven said yes to continue with the business and ENT and six said no and I don't know if there's any abstentions. I didn't get the abstention and two abstentions. Okay. Um, on the CEC, uh, relative to the issue of a dean versus an assistant dean, six said yes to the dean, four said no, and five abstained. On the question of whether or not uh, the CEC reported to the VPI, uh, four said yes, five said no, and I didn't get no, the no, abstentions. No, no, it was, it was four to four. And then, and then it, was we, a it was broken. It was broken, and then the, the chair broke the tie. So then we ended up with five saying it stays with the VP of Educational Services for the time being. And, uh, but it's a dean. But it's a, it, it is a dean. Yes. It, it was voted right. as a dean. On the realigned programs, um, on the question of architecture to VAMs, nine said yes, three said no, three abstentions. On the question of fashion to VAMs, 10 said yes, 2 said no, 3 abstained. 
on the question of graphic communications to VAMS, zero said yes, 15 said no. On the question of computer science to math, 15 said yes, zero said no. On the question of kinesiology, health, and athletics to natural sciences, 14 said yes, uh, zero said no, one abstained. On the question of VPI and library faculty to address succession plan, three said yes, eight said no, one abstention, and then we had the follow-on vote to uh, add the library to the uh, list of permanent deans. That's pretty much it, folks. So this chart then will be revised to reflect these votes and then sent forward to the College Council and the Academic Senate. And the Academic Senate discussion will begin in about 35 minutes. Because it's on the agenda, correct? Do we start any more meetings? Uh, we do not have any more meetings planned at the moment, but we need to regroup and you'll, you'll be hearing from us. Oh, dear. There, there's one more meeting scheduled for May 14th or something, or do we know? You'll, 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 you'll hear from us. Thank you all. Listen, and a sincere thank you to everybody yes, for you. all the work to get us to this point and certainly for some very, very thoughtful discussion today. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you.